there's actually over 500,000 amazing people who love math. Over 500,000 now. And I just wanted to make this video because it's just shocking to me. I didn't expect that. And I want to say thank you to everyone for, you know, being a subscriber here on the channel. Um, I started this channel a, a long time ago, 2014, sometime in September. And I just started posting just random math videos. And it's slowly grown. Here you see some books. And these books are some of the first books that I reviewed when I started doing book reviews here on the channel. And they're some of my favorite books. That's why I picked these. I'll show you these in a minute, but 500,000 is a lot. Like that's, that's a lot of people. I was thinking about it. That's more people than there are people in Iceland or the Bahamas or Belize. I mean, that's a lot of people. And it's shocking that there's that many people out there in the world who, who love math. Because, you know, if I go to a grocery store and I walk up to someone and I say, hey, um, do you know what abstract algebra is? They're probably not going to know. Right? They're probably not going to know. So it's just really cool that there's so many people out there in the world who, who love math. And I guess it's a really big world, right? There's a lot of countries out there with tons of people. I mean, yeah, just a lot of people out there. So it's pretty cool. So thank you. So I have three books here. I thought, let me pick three books that I'll talk about briefly that I've used a lot. I've used all of these books quite a bit. I have read uh, big portions of these books. Let's start with this one here because this one was recommended to me by a professor I had who was a brilliant man and he's still alive and he is a brilliant man. And the book is called The First Course in Abstract Algebra and it's by John B. Frelay. This is the third edition. There's probably a newer edition. And this book is good because it has a lot of content. It has a lot of content. It has tiny sections, which is pretty nice. And it has good examples and good explanations. Um, the one thing I didn't like about this book, and this is this is going to be going to sound really specific and nitpicky, and it's not something that really could affect <laughs> your viewpoint of this book. Uh, this is really specific. Is uh, he does the the multiplication of cycles backwards? He does it the same way Wolfram Alpha does it. So, yeah, just just nitpicking. It's not uh, the standard way of doing it. It does have some field theory. I've used it for that. We're studying some stuff with fields. And it also has answers to some of the exercises, but not all. I definitely wish it had more answers. It would definitely make it a, a better book. This is considered a beginner level book in abstract algebra. So if you were taking an abstract algebra course in college, this might be the book that you use. I'm pretty sure it's still in print. I'll try to leave a link to this book and all the others, but the wonderful book by a wonderful author and mathematician, John B. Frelay. That's I just got to give it a whiff here because a lot of memories with this book. I'm just going to give it a whiff. Ah, oh, ah, oh, amazing book. I used the Saracino book when I took um, abstract algebra as an undergrad. It's easier than this book, but this book has more content. So it's a good book. Many people would consider this book their favorite book. And there's other great books out there, the Pinter book, etc. I just wanted to pick some that I'm really familiar with. I've probably read, well, I'm gonna say 30% of this book, maybe, maybe more, maybe more, maybe more, probably about 30%. I've done quite a few of the exercises. Next book I wanna show you is Linear Algebra. This one is by Friedberg, Inzel, and Spence. And I took a course using this book. Actually, uh, my professor, when I took this course, was the professor who recommended the Frelay book. He's the same person, genius, genius mathematician, super genius. Putnam winner, multiple time Putnam winner mathematician. So the Putnam is the um, the big math contest. It's like the really, really big one here in the US. If you win the Putnam, it's 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 a big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> so I, I trained for the Putnam, but I never I never competed. I competed once in a math contest and I did terrible. Linear algebra, fourth edition by Friedberg, Inzel, and Spence. I'm pretty sure there's a newer edition. This book is a great reference. It's got an index that is unbeatable. So I found myself referencing this book and using the index multiple times to look up certain things. Um, so that's a pro. It's got a lot of content. Again, that's a pro. Con, it's terse. It's hard for beginners. It's not meant for beginners, in my opinion. I think this is meant uh, for someone taking a second course in linear algebra, which is exactly what I used it for. I use this for a second course in linear algebra, but this is a comprehensive modern linear algebra book, which I think is important to have 
if you're um, serious about studying uh, mathematics. It's a very good book, right? It's a very good book. There's a reason it's popular. It's because it's good, right? So it's good. I didn't feel that way when I was studying. It's it's really rigorous, and I had a really hard time when I was taking the class. Um, I ended up with an A minus, and it was a well deserved A minus because I just I didn't deserve an A, right? I didn't deserve it. wasn't A material, and I was kind of like relieved when I got the A minus. I'm like, yeah, that's good. That was a that was a righteous grade, man. <laughs> it's just a really well deserved A minus. So great book for anyone who wants to learn linear algebra. It's got awesome proofs. This is the book I used for advanced calculus one and two as an undergrad. So I've read almost all of it. I would say 60%, not maybe not almost all, 60%. You know, we didn't cover every section um, in, in the courses because, you know, you can't go too fast because then the whole class is lost. You know, it's, it's a hard, hard course. This consumed my life. You can see that by the wear and tear on this particular copy. I bought this brand new and this is the result. It's a course in mathematical analysis, so you would um, you would use this for a course in undergraduate real analysis as well, or advanced calculus, same thing. It talks about sequences. Here it's talking about convergence of sequences in Rn. So, and it has a lot of content. It has pretty much everything you need, right? Everything you need. Much easier than the Rudin book. Uh, Principles of Mathematical Analysis is a much, much uh, more challenging book than this. This is easier, in my opinion, so good for learning it has some answers you can see i've done all these I've done a lot of the exercises in this book yeah look at that so i've done i've done quite a few i bought this new so all the writing you see in this book is mine and yeah it's got a lot of answers but it needs more <laughs> so yeah it doesn't have it needs a lot more that's a big weakness with this book um fitzpatrick i, I i'm not sure if he's still alive i think he is uh, I remember a while ago, someone left a comment saying that this was their teacher. So that's pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. I sometimes wish I can get like autographed copies of these books. That'd be like my dream to like, you know, ask these people, hey, you know, can I have your, can I have your autograph? But yeah, then you got to travel to them and stuff like that. I suppose I could mail the book and ask them, but I don't know if they do it. It'd be really cool though to have autographed copies of a book like this. Great book for beginners. It's probably one of the easiest ones out there. There's other good books by, for, for beginners. Um, Jay Cummings has one on real analysis. It's a new book. Really, really good. Uh, what else? What else is really good? Uh, the book by Abbott is really good. The book by Ross. Those are also really, those are all really good beginner books. Bartle and Sherbert is a good book for beginners. I'm talking like beginner, beginner, right? This one is, is for beginners, but it also has some multivariable stuff, right? So a lot of the books I just mentioned, they don't have all the content that this has, right? So this has a lot of content, which makes it really suitable for like two courses, as I used it for two courses. So, yeah. Um, a great book, awesome books. Anyways, I just wanted to show you three of the books that I've really spent a great deal of time uh, mulling over, uh, reading, uh, struggling through, uh, working through the exercises, and they're all good books. They're all good books. They all have their pros and cons, as I discussed you know they're all they all have their things but yeah five hundred thousand people really nuts i i didn't expect um my channel to do that well you know when i started i started posting videos and uh, people were watching them right away like because i posted a lot of videos i did a lot of math problems and people were watching the videos i'm like oh who's watching my videos and um so that that's pretty cool it's pretty cool that uh, you know people out there I, I didn't know you know i was new to youtube I was like, do people do math on YouTube? Like, is that a thing? And, you know, does anyone watch math videos? So, pretty cool that people do. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Just wanted to make this video and say thank you. Bring some really good books. I hope everyone has an awesome, awesome new year.